So we have a Kane Chronicles Netflix adaption coming, and I feel like most people haven't been talking about it in comparison to the Percy Jackson TV show news. So I'm here to rectify that because I've been going through the Kane Chronicles on my podcast recently, and I am loving every second of it, which is just making me more excited for the adaption. So here is my fan cast for the adult and godly figures for the Kane Chronicles Netflix adaption. <laughs> Before I go in, I want to give a huge thank you to Karen De La Vega Art on Instagram, whose artwork is being used for the thumbnail. Their art is incredible. I hope Netflix brings them on as a concept artist because I just the vibe that you get from their Kane Chronicles art, and also the fact that they are one of the few who do Kane Chronicles art. Um, amazing, love them. Stan, links in the description. Now the first character I want to start with is someone who is very important to our main characters but also plays a very large role in the first film which is obviously the main thing that I'll probably be discussing fan casting wise for this and that is Julius Kane, the father of Carter and Sadie. And the actor I think who should be playing Julius Kane is David Harewood because not only has David played these sort of mentor-like figures, like in Supergirl, where he plays the Martian, he is very much a mentor to Supergirl's character, and many of the other characters in the show as well, alongside actually being a family man himself, having a family that he loves desperately, and just being someone who is just family orientated, both with his found family and his family family. <laughs> Um, and I think that's the sort of vibe that I would love to see from Julius. Out of the fact, spoilers, when he becomes Osiris, that becomes more of a character, becomes more apparent for his character that he still loves his family. But he needs to have the gravitas to feel like a god, which I think David Harewood definitely has. So David Harewood as the father and godly figure of Julius Kane. Next up is another important character throughout the series, and that is Amos Kane, brother to Julius and uncle to Carter and Sadie. Now there are a few options that I had for Amos, but the one that I went for in the end is Tyler James William, because I don't know, there's just something about him. He has that cool sort of vibe to him, um, which Amos definitely has. Like he's, Amos is a saxophone player. He has that cool, just cool aesthetic to him. But I think Tyler also has the ability to show that sort of darker side of Amos's character, someone who later, spoilers again, becomes possessed by a god and goes through the sort of trauma that comes with that, especially a forced possession. And the sort of brokenness that comes about him later on, like he, after a while, he's definitely not the person he was that we met at the start. And I think Tyler definitely has the acting chops to show the cool side, but also the broken side of a man that we came to know as someone who was exciting and daring and supportive and loving of his family, but becomes a bit of a shell of himself later on. And um, yeah, I think Tyler, Tyler could do that. Next up is one that we get here and there throughout the series, but isn't the most prominent character, but is definitely prominent in who she is, even if she's not a major character in the story. And that is Ruby Kane, the mother who sadly passed away of Carter and Sadie and the wife of Julius Kane. And there was only one person I could think to play this character, and that is Lena Headey, who most people probably know from Game of Thrones, but I know from Imagine Me and You and various other British shows as well. Um, and we know she can pull off like a blonde wig and blonde hair colours because obviously Ruby Kane is blonde, but in her most recent film, which is Gunpowder Milkshake, where she plays a mother, I think she, she gives us family, she, she'd be the sort of cool mum, which is the, the visual that we're given to Ruby is that she was someone who was cool, she was very loving, she, she cared deeply about her family and didn't want to leave them, even though she had to try and save the world as best as, possible, as, best as she could, she didn't want to leave her family, she had no choice in the end. But I think Lena could play off this sort of sacrificial figure who wants to protect her family more than anything, even if in the end that means leaving them. Um, and she definitely has the emotional capacity to show the uh, reunion situation that we get with the Kane family um, in various parts of, of the series. Um, and that will be emotional, so I'm very excited to see how that is, and I think Lena could definitely pull that off. But now we're going to head into the gods, and the gods are ones that I think... 
it was kind of hard to cast some of these. Some of them were easy, which is where I'm going to start with the easy ones first, which is with the god Thoth, which is obviously of wisdom. And the first person that came to mind, who I think is perfect, is Rami Malik, because Thoth in the series has a little bit of that mad scientist look to him, someone who's kind of not fully all there because, you know, his mind is constantly running with knowledge. Every, like, there was, I think there's the description of him is like he's writing on his, like his professor's cloak because his mind won't stop running. It won't stop coming up with thoughts and ideas and like equations and all these sort of things. And I think Rami can really give that visual of like insanely intelligent to the point that is, it is kind of scary. Like the level of intelligence that Thoth has is unnerving. And that is the feeling that we get in the books as well when we do meet him. I think Rami could really pull off that sort of unnerving, intense intelligence that the god Thoth definitely gives. Next up is Isis. Now Isis, again spoilers, is connected to Sadie and um, just the visual that we have of Isis and just kind of her characterization of kind of being a bit sassy, a little bit out for her own gain. The first person that I thought of as well as the fact that like her symbol is, I think her symbol is like, a, oh God, it's a type of bird. I've forgotten the bird it is, but there was an image. I'll be popping, obviously I've, I've been popping up the images of the actors, but this image in particular of Tessa Thompson is what sold me on her being Isis because I mean, just look at the image in general. She has this aura about her of being someone that is intelligent, is hyper aware of everyone else's situation and knows how to use that to her advantage. And I know there's just something that Tessa has the ability to make her appear as someone who you wouldn't really think much of her until it's too late, which is also the vibe that I think Isis gives as well. And that's definitely the vibes that I've been getting from some of Tessa's acting in some of her recent films and shows. Next up is Horace, which, spoilers again, is connected to Carter. And one of the, f I couldn't, it took me a while actually, I will admit, to find an actor for Horace because Horace is a character that is very confident, a little bit too, he's very strong headed, no, not strong headed, yeah, no, is that, is that bull headed, bull headed. Um, in some areas and he definitely pushes Carter beyond his wants and things that he wants. Basically he pushes Carter. He's a good foil for Carter who is always quite nervous about his decisions and Horace is the person who's like just do it. Um, and just from that sort of vibe and also just this actor's look in particular, Mena Masood, who most people will know from um, Aladdin, the live action film, I think gives this sort of can give this sort of flavour to Horace of a character who is very much, because Horace is obviously, he is the he is the big cheese, shall we say, in mythology. And I think Mena Masood has that gravitas about him that would draw people to listen to what he is saying, which Horace, I think, is gives that sort of vibe to him about. So I can just hear like Mena's voice as Horace speaking to Carter. Um, and like pushing him to do things. Yeah, I think Mena Masood as Horace would, would work. Next up is our favourite cat, Bast. And the actress I think who should play Bast uh, is, and I apologise if I say this last name wrong, is Yasmin Al Mazari, who is known from Quantico, who, uh, where she plays twins as well, which is very, very cool. So it just shows her level of acting chops. But she also has like past, um, like professional dance experience which considering Bast is in a sense basically a gymnast and has like very flexible and dance like elements to her just to her character like in the first thing that um we see Bast in she's flipping she's spinning around all these sort of things around monsters and I think Yasmin could definitely have that sort of style to her acting ability um it could definitely bring that to Bast's character with her dancing ability and also her acting ability of being a bit sly and I don't know just being kind of cheeky as well which I quite like but also very calculating um and yeah I don't know just seeing her in Quantico but also hearing about her dance experience it's like yes Bast. Next up is Anubis. So Anubis is basically uh <laughs> and this is the way everyone describes him which I kind of 
get but it's also confusing but anyway is that uh he is the egyptian nico but kind of older um and the first one and admittedly the actor that i'm casting due to their age but also just the fact that i i don't want anubis and sadie to end up together in uh this adaption because it was creepy in general but just don't do it anyway um but especially with this actor that can't be done um because the actor that I've casted for Anubis is Aidan Gallagher, who plays Five in The Umbrella Academy. I just think he has this kind of... I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, but he just feels like Anubis. Even with the art for the thumbnail with, um, with from uh, Karen, it looks like it could be Aidan Gallagher, just from that style alone. And so I could see Aiden as Anubis. I don't think I can explain it any other way because I don't actually even know my reasons. He just looks like he could be Anubis. Then we have Set. Now I know Set, spoilers, is technically connected to Amos Kane, but I think another actor should be playing Set when we see them um, as their main figure, but also later on where Set is just themselves. And the person I think who should play Set is Jimon Honsu, who has played many villains, like he was the voice of Drago in How to Chain Your Dragon. Um, he's been in loads of things and I can't actually remember half of them. Um, I think he was in the most recent Charlie's Angels film as well, but as a mentor figure. But um, I don't know, the vo his voice just very much gives me the feel of like what, like when we would hear Set speaking with his voice, you would feel nervous. You'd be like, oh my God. Who is this? What is this? What what are they doing? Like hearing his plan it with Jimon's voice would just it would put you on edge, which I think is the intention behind Sep's character is that every time you hear him speak, you feel nervous and you're wondering just like how much of a threat this being is. And I think Jimon can definitely bring bring that to Sep's character. Then we have Bess. <laughs> now Bess I don't I can't remember if he comes up in the Red Pyramid or in Throne of Fire, so the sequel. But I'm casting him anyway. Um Bess, the only person I can see is Bess is Lee Arenberg, who plays Grumpy in Once Upon a Time. And it's because of his characterization of Grumpy in Once Upon a Time, it's why I'm picturing him as Bess. Like someone who is it's kind of rugged, it kind of looks like they're not <laughs> Looks like they're, they're, well, basically, basically, no. It's Lee Arenberg as Grumpy in Once Upon a Time as Bess. Like, that complete characterization that you get of Grumpy in Once Upon a Time. Specifically, the storybook version of Grumpy, so where he's Leroy, I think should be the exact characterization we get of Bess. Someone who's very grouchy, kind of a little bit, you, you don't really want to be in their presence too much, um, but and it's very like off-putting but it's also quite playful someone who will stand up for you and be very protective sometimes a little bit too much but in a good way so yeah lee arenberg as bess and then finally for ra now um i know there are other gods but ra is these are kind of the main ones so ra who does play a significant role the only person i could think of was danny glover because obviously ra as we come to know well see Ra later um and this is no offense to Danny Glover um is very very old kind of senile a little bit not there and I don't know I just feel like like Glover could really play that role up like he has the tone of voice that would work for a sort of elderly god um and I don't know I feel like I'm insulting <laughs> I feel like I'm insulting him but in a good way because Ra then obviously comes to who they are meant to be later on um and i just i just think he could really play that role up in a sort of comedic way but also in with that sort of hint of sadness of like oh my god this, the most powerful god is like this now like what do we do um so i could really think he i could see um glover playing that up a lot um but yeah that is my casting for uh the main adult characters and the main gods that we see that play a significance throughout the series um I know I technically could have casted Apophis. Actually, you no, know, I'm going to do it right now. I can see Mark Hamill as Apophis' voice because Mark Hamill is known for playing a lot of voice acting for um, villainous characters, and I could kind of, I could kind of hear it, especially with like the Ozai esque type vibe that he could give to Apophis. I'd be down for that. Um, but yeah, that is my fan casting for um, 
<laughs> these characters. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the the actors that I've casted and who you would cast for any of these roles if you've got a different opinion in the comment section down below. Thank you all for tuning into this video. Check out my social media links in the description box. Be sure to check out and subscribe and follow Karen De La Vega on Instagram and um yeah this has been a lot of fun I'll definitely be doing more Kane Chronicles videos in future because the hype needs to be there for the adaption but also the hype needs to be there for the books like seriously so um look forward to that in future um again thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time